All right. So in our last session, we had completed lesson three, which was all about sorting and removing duplicates. So before moving to this chapter, uh, did you have any queries in your exercises, practice? Did you, pra did you revise the topic? Yeah, we did the practice. Any anywhere where you got stuck? Um, in practice, the challenge where there is keep equal to there was one. I did it uh, actually, but I just uh, wanted to show it whether it is okay, correct. I'll, okay, just share your screen. Uh, yeah. What is the difference between using the keep uh, in the variable? Okay, that you will see in this upcoming chapter. <clears throat> can you see it? Yes, uh -huh. I can see your screen. <coughs> So I did, uh, first I did with uh, like this data step, I don't know whether it's correct or not. But when I talked with Nilima and she told me like we have to keep it like this, so I again searched and did that one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was not understanding earlier how to do it. Okay. So when you executed this data step, uh -huh. What uh, output he was getting? How many columns? Uh, can I show? I, I will just run. Yes, yes, yes. Just execute and let me. So, yeah, I think I got got it right. Uh, so what? How many columns you see here? See? Yeah, two. Table? Two. Why? Yeah. Because if you see your code, in your code you had used the statement of kip. Yeah. Right. So what that keep does in data step is it works like your var statement with prop print. Okay. Okay, but prop print is only for result. It's not affecting the columns in your original table. But with keep, your uh, table which you are creating country list with that data mm -hmm. statement, country list two, and you are reading from country country list and from country list irrespective with all other columns you are keeping only two columns to be selected into this output data set called country list two yeah okay so that was all about kip so we'll see that in detail in this chapter so but how good, yes, how so it is different from this keep and uh, uh, i just wanted to the know. one which you have written in proc sort correct so yeah. In proc when sort, you, you are writing, uh -huh. yes, yes, I'll tell you. In proc sort, you are actually using a procedure step where you are sorting your data and creating an output data set which has been sorted. You are not overwriting your original tables, but you are creating a new data set without equal to option called country list. Okay, okay. so it's not a data step, it's a proc step. So in yeah. that case, you use you want to select only the columns which are to be in your output table. So here you do not use as a keep statement, but you use it as a data set option. So it's an option which you're writing in front of your data set into parenthesis. So it will behave as same as what you have done in data step, but only difference is here you're using in proc step and the data set this is also one option where you will be writing in parenthesis in front of individual data file that this is where you want to select the columns with keep equal to data set option okay <coughs> maybe ultimate I will... goal is same <coughs> okay in data step also you can use keep equal to data set option in data statement in front of that country list too. there also you can do the same thing all right. Okay. If I feel, uh, uh, if I any doubt, I will again ask. Sure, sure. But I hope for this, it's clear. Yeah. Okay. 
yeah sometimes again we i do it again i feel like okay why not not like this and like this yeah good good attempt thank you yes i will just stop sharing sure sure others tanmuga priyanka welcome how was your day yeah fine oh, good great yes did you happen to revise um, yes i uh, revised any anything from your end which you need to discuss uh, this no topic no no priyanka no great okay so let's start this lesson number 4 which is preparing data which consists of three topics reading and filtering data computing new columns conditional processing so within the five steps of your sas programming or your data processing we have already seen accessing data we had seen explore data now we are going to move ashwini to... yes yes that's... your screen is blank yes thank you for informing me let me check yes fine all fine yes so we are going to start with preparing data which consists of three topics reading and filtering data computing new columns conditional processing so let's start to understand what is preparing data so among your five steps of data processing with sas programming we have already learned accessing data explore data now we are into the steps of preparing data so we'll be learning various things like how to implement functions how to process your data conditionally so that you get the desired data right so when we say preparing or prepare your data as per the requirement or business scenario is like you already have a table now the table may have you know tables are too huge it may have thousands of columns millions of rows but as per the requirement of reports to be created you may not require all that information right so we are going to learn how to create a new data set from existing data set and for that we'll be getting introduced to a data step which has a syntax will be right data which ends with the semicolon now this statement is starting with an identifying keyword data and the output data set name which you want to create you will write the name of that data set and you end the step with run so this is your data step which where you are going to create your table as per your business requirement so that later on this table is used for processing all right so this table will be used for your analyzing fine so in this data step one can write filter rows and columns one can compute new columns and one can also process your data conditional so when you say compute new columns it means that in case the output table you need to create a new column apart from existing column like for example you have a table for students or employees with or uh, of an organization which consists columns employee id first name last name address salary okay uh, date of joining so you have this columns but at the same time from that input table your output should ta table should have a column which is bonus so bonus is the column which is not in your input table but you need to create it so that your new table will have that column so that column is called as compute computed column or the column which you are creating as per your business requirement and you'll process your data conditionally also like in case if you want to select only those employees who reside in uh, the country us okay so you need to write a statement in your data set where the new data set will have the information telling that you will be writing if your country is equal to usa then 
do this or do that, whatever is required as per the business scenario. So that is what is conventional processing. So we'll see all this step by step and we'll see how one can create a new data set by using this data step. Remember this data step is a very powerful tool to create, to clean and to prepare your data. All right. So as per the syntax, let's understand how one can write this data step. So moving with this information, I'm going to write a data step, simply write data. So we know now within our libraries, now we have existing libraries, we have created our own library, which is user defined, but also permanent. So these are some of the data files. Apart from it, we have another permanent library, which is given by SAS for us, which is SAS help. So we know in SAS help data file, data library, we have data called as cars, right? So we have this cars data. So within this cars data, we have the columns, which consists of the names like make, model, type, origin, driven train, MSRP, invoice, engine size, cylinders, horsepower, and so many columns. So there are 15 columns and 428 rows. So among this all 428 rows, my new, new data, which I want to create is, I want to create a column with the data, which is for SUV cars, okay? I want this information to be read from set from my input data, which is saved in this library. Within this library, I have a data called cars, correct? And I run this. So understand the input table consists of 15 columns, 428 rows. Now I'm writing a three line step, which consists of a data statement, set statement and run. Now you are quite familiar what run does. Run indicates or run tells SAS to stop processing your step. Whereas data, it's, it's the keyword which is starting not only the step, but also a statement. So this indicates SAS that you are going to create a new data set. And what does the set statement as? It's an indication to SAS that you are asking or providing the input source of data file from which it has to read the information to be set into or to be put into your new data, fine? So now when I execute this data step, simply understand what is happening by looking into your output. So what is your output coming? Again, it's telling you have created a data set. So see by default, the table name you have given was SUV underscore cars, but see the default library, it's work. Why work? Because we know that whenever we are writing any table without a libref to it, it will be default saved into work library, which is temporary library. So when you look your log also, so what is the notes it's giving after submitting this data set? So first note is telling, there were 428 observations read from the data set sasl.cars. So your data set work.suv underscore cars has so many observations and so many variables. And third note, your data step was executed without any errors. That means this data step is used. So look at here. It's telling 428 observations were read from input data. And your output data, see the name? It's by default taking it into a work library, work.suv underscore cars. See, it's reading all the rows and all the columns from your input table. So when you write this data step without any further instructions, reading from input table, it's creating your output data, which is copying all the columns and all the variables from input table. So it's like a mirror image, correct? But as per our scenario, what we want, we are going to create a data only for SUV cars. So how are you going to do this? Any idea? So now you know this output data consists the type of cars with all types of cars, but we require this output data only for SUV cars. So how we'll do this? Any Very good question. Absolutely. You can always write the same where statement which you saw with your props 
to filter your rows, you are going to write where your column type should have the values, which is the values for S U. Now, why I'm writing this in two quotes? Because this type column is having its characteristics. That type is a character type of column. And this character type of column value should always be written with quotes, values. Okay, I'm talking about values. Whereas, why I'm writing this in uppercase? Because in my data, I find the value for type is uppercase. All right. So now let's see how it works. So now when I execute this data step, see how it's processing. So now it's telling that this work dot SUV cars is created. It has 60 rows, 15 columns. So when I look my code, uh, sorry, log, look at here. It's telling where 60 observations were read from sasl.cars, where statement is been activated or it is working on the rows and your new data set is created with so many rows and columns. So see what has happened from sasa.cars which it was reading 428 rows. Now it is filtering the rows only with this criteria. Hence out of 428 observations, now it's reading only 60 observations from sasa.cars where this has been true or this criteria is true hence out of 428 60 observations are true for SUV cars correct and see your output all assume right now moving back if i give this as you think it will work Yes. Do you think this will work? I think yes. Uh, SAS is not a case sensitive, right? All right. Any more inputs? Shanmuga, Priyanka, Swarupa. I don't think so. It will work. Okay. Why so? It's like a, it's character, right? So yes. Uh, columns are right. Okay, okay. Exactly. Absolutely. I know what are you trying to do. It will not catch SUV okay. because it's in a smaller. Right. So now look at you. When I execute this data step, so there are, it's telling that table is created because it's copying all columns, but it's not able to select the rows. So there are zero rows. Looking into log also, it's telling zero observations were read from this table it's working on this criteria so even after working on this criteria it's a new output is in having zero observations why it's because as i said you the column type though it's a character type the values is case sensitive what it nilima yeah we are filtering on values Column name is all fine. It can be upcase, small case, it's all fine. Coding can be upcase, small case is fine. But the values which are from your data is not in this case, correct? It is an upcase. Therefore, it will search into sasa.cars SUV value, which is in small case, right? That is why it did not find and it's telling zero observations. Hence, you go back and you simply connect this and again read it. So this is how your data step works. So you are preparing your data. Now, what is your data? You have created a data only for SUV cars. So this becomes your output table, which is for as per your business requirement. And now your data is created. So on this data, you can write various props to generate the reports. Okay, so that is where we are getting introduced with this data step. Hence, it's a very powerful tool to create, clean and prepare your data. All right. So for example, this was where I'm creating a new table. Fine. So your data step can also be like SUV underscore cars. I write set. SUV underscore cars 
and I may give the statement as uh, where make is equal to what is the make columns? Make columns consist the values like what is this make like Acura, Audi, okay, BMW. So just understand what I'm trying to tell you, okay. So I'm telling this should be suppose. So understand earlier this table was having 60 rows, correct? Now see what I'm doing. What is my input source? What is my output source? So what do you think it will do? It will filter out BMW from SUV cars data set. But look at the output data set, this data set name. We have already created a data set of SUV, right? So from right. that table, it will now take out only the make of BMW. So it will further filter out from that data. Absolutely. Set. So what it is doing is it will not always create a new table, but you can always work on existing table also where it will overwrite your current whatever the data is. So that is what it will not only prepare a new table, not only create new table, but you can also manipulate existing table. Got it? So see, it has only two rows where SUV, it's already SUV table, but it is having only this two columns, the values, BMW for column make. So see what it's telling? Two observations were read from this input table, which is the same data set. And the same data set is got overwritten with this new filter criteria. Hence, it is manipulating existing table with the same new table it is manipulating. Got it? So it's not always that data set creates new data set, but you can also manipulate existing data set from this data set as well. All right? Yeah. Fine? So that dot cars, like uh, we don't always have to give like uh, the library name and then dot cars, right? You can directly work. No, Swarupa, this cars is a data which is saved in this library. So you have to refer it that you have yeah. to read cars from Sasel. So if you don't write this, it will, you know what it will do? It will read cars as reading it from work library. So it will search in work library. Now see how it works. So see what it's doing? See this error? Yeah. So it's referring this that it's to be read from work library and in work library we do not have any table called cars. Hence it's telling file work.cars data does not exist. So this is what the name of the table which is referred in which library. So that is why you use that we had cars data set in SAS help library. No, I, I was asking about like this, uh, the second data step. Now this was already, we had it in work, right? So work we know whenever any table is saved in work library, either you refer it like this or you refer it this way. It's equivalent. So when any table is temporarily saved that is in your work library, even if you do not refer its libref, it is going to default take it as work library. Now see here, we did not provide any libref, correct? But when we executed this data step, it is referring a log that it is creating a table called work.scv cows, correct? So see, it's giving this name also. So when you see this log also, it's filling this name, it's been created. Why? Because though I have not provided any libraries, by default, SAS treats it to temporary library, which is for. But when you are reading from an existing library, which is permanent, like PG1, SAS Health, so those are existing permanent library, you have to specify its library. Okay, got it. Understood? Yeah, thank right? you. Yes. Okay, Shanmuga, Priyanka, any doubts, any questions? In the second, uh, um, like in the second program, we can rename the data as some other name also, right? Yes, yes. 
No, absolutely. You can give new name also. I just okay. wanted to tell you that data step, because this was highlighted that it's a powerful tool, it's create, clean, and prepare your data. You can also manipulate your existing data. That is where I gave you this example. In the current situation, it just uh, overwritten. The so what it did, yes, it's overwritten, but I could say it manipulated your existing table. Yeah, okay. okay. It is the same table, you are manipulating it with this okay. data stuff. Correct? Okay. Yeah. Yes. So that we cannot do with PROC because PROC is procedure step. It processing existing table. Yeah. Okay. Are you getting it? Now in case if I write PROC print data equal to, I simply write cars and I write run. So understand. I'm just giving this example with print. Even if you use proc, freight, proc means you are going to get the same thing. So what it's telling? There is no library created with Correct. Time. In this library, see, I have not referred any libref here. That means by default, what SAS is doing, it's searching into work library. Are you getting it? Swarupa yeah. and others. So it's searching default into work library and it finds this table is not there. So see, even if you check in your work library, do we have cars table? No. So hence, it's telling not there. So what does I was trying to tell you is prop step works on existing table. That means prop step process on existing table. If the table is not there, the procedure cannot be executed because it's a procedure it is processing a particular table correct hence yeah. you should have always a table existing to that process whereas in data step you are creating a table or you are manipulating existing table all right yeah. fine yes okay now if i write prop print to suv underscore cars now i will have this information in a report form this was a table this was a table created i'm creating a result so now because suv underscore cars is existing in my work library though i did not refer it so i have a special yes yes this spell check. Now that is what. Again, I did not refer a library for this SUV. You know, temporary table. SAS will default look into your work. So see, all 15 columns and two rows are showing in result pane. Now we do not have data output table pane here or window here. Because of procedure, it's showing you the result. So this is what prop is doing. It is processing existing table. You are not creating any new table. It's only, I can say, um, the um, proc sort is the only procedure where it is not creating any output report. But in case if you do not write out equal to option with proc sort, it overrides your, your data to be rearranged, correct? Otherwise, by default, most of the procs generates the results, except for procs. All right, you will may face this type of question in your interviews. What is the difference of procs and other procs? Mm. That it does not create a result. Right? And it will rearrange the values in a sorted order as per instructions in your input table. If you do not write out equal to option. Yeah. Agreed? Yes. So please note down whenever I say that this is the topic where you may face it in interviews. So you can highlight if you're writing it or you can, if you are creating any notepad or any word document, see to it you update those documents in case if you're not writing down. All right. So this was about your data step introduction. So see, using your data step to create a science data set, 
you use this three statements. These are the default statements. Of course, this is indication that you are creating a new table. This is the indication that you are reading from input table. This is to stop your step. So specifies the table to be created and set statement specifies the table to read it. So see, this is where it's telling, it's creating C, reading from pre-existing permanent library, you are creating table which is saved into work library. All right, so see, you create the table called my class in work library and with set reads the table class in your, from your SAS library. So from permanent table, you are creating temporary table. So understand the terminologies. Normal database terminology, we call this as table, but in SAS, we term it as SAS data set. So this is what you see the output, the new data set my class is created, which is temporary. Why temporary? Because it's saving in your temporary library work. And it's reading from permanent library. Correct? Okay. As a data analyst, now whenever we submit this data step, you know it is creating a data set, right? But being an analyst, you should be always understanding what is happening at the back end because this is what log is giving. But what is happening at back end so that it's happening or it is selecting these values? It's very important as a data analyst for us to learn the back end processing of this data step. So, hence, whenever you are submitting this data step for processing, there are always two phases occurring at the backend. So what are those two phases of your data step? One is compilation and one is execution. Okay, so what is compilation? So compilation is the phase where it checks syntax for errors, identify columns attributes, establish new table metadata. Metadata means the information like the descriptive part, like the name of the table, when it's created, how many rows, how many columns, all right? Uh, how many pages it requires to save those rows. So this is what will happen at the back end is compilation. Once compilation is done, execution is done or execution moves ahead, which it will start creating a data portion of your data set. Now, if you remember, we have learned earlier that Whenever we are processing or we have a table or a data set, it consists of two portion, descriptor and data portion. So in compilation phase, it creates the descriptor portion of your new table. And in execution phase, it creates the data portion of your new table where it reads and writes data, perform data manipulation, calculations and so on. So what happens behind the scene when your data step runs is actually two phases, compilation and execution. So compilation is the phase, please note down, compilation is the phase of your data step which creates the descriptor portion of your data, whereas execution phase of your data step creates the data portion of your data. Yes. Can you say it slowly? Yes, yes, yes sure, sure. I hope you remember descriptor and data portion. Those are the two yes. parts of your table. Correct? Yes. So when are you, whenever you will be submitting this data step, what happens in the back end is your data step is gets processed. So there are two phases which it processes, which is compilation and execution. So compilation is the phase where SAS creates your data descriptor portion. All right? Yeah. So your descriptor portion is created during compilation phase, whereas your data portion is created during execution phase. Simple.
yes. uh, why descriptor it's telling it's a compilation phase we output it's because see in descriptor portion or while compiling it will check for syntax error identify column attribute so what is descriptor descriptor is nothing but it gives you the description of your table and column information right so same thing it is identifying column attributes establish new table metadata so that is compilation whereas what is execution reads and writes data perform data manipulations calculations and so on where you see the data pushed correct <clears throat> so this is how execution is working so what it's telling you know so when execution is working at the back end for every row when it reads so always make a note that when you submit any step sas reads that step from top to bottom sequentially so this is the step of data where it will read this statement it understand it has to create a data set when it hits this statement that is set it highlights or it gets connected that it has to be read from input source which is sasl.cars now this is one of the permanent table why because the library references permanent library so it will locate this library and within this library it has to read class data so for this class data okay now what it is it will be doing it now again it will read the input table from top to bottom it will read from first row till the last row sequential so for every row your every statement of data step gets processed so that's what this is telling you that read a row from input table sequentially process your statements at the end write the row to the output table look back to look top of your data step to read the next row from your input table so what it's telling that when sas hits the first row to be read from your input table so for that single row the statements from your data step is processed when run encounters that row which is been processed during this step is written to your output data set now run indicates that it should write the current processing row to the output data and it should also again written back to read the same data step for your next rows from this data which you have provided as input storage so make a note that for every row from input table sas processes it i every time once so that means if there are 428 rows in your class data or 19 rows in class data for every 19 rows your data step is executed at least once so that means your data step will be processed 19 times for every 19 rows from sasl.cars therefore this cycle keeps on moving until it reaches the end of this data step for its last row therefore it's telling its automatic looping makes processing data easy so it's not at one go all the rows are read from input table no this data step is read every time the new row is read from this data set so in case there are 19 rows in class your data step will be read 19 times therefore this looping of this goes keeps on moving so when it hit runs it will go back to your data step within this data step it highlights this data step it moves into set statement which is the row now next row suppose the third row now third row will be read processed so your data step will be processed now three times or third time so this is the looping which occurs for every row your data step keeps on moving that many times getting it now understood yes this is a very interesting fact so um, how does it get to know that this is the last row it is it is like when it moves to the next run when run encounters it understood by sas that test to again move back to read this data step so when it again hits set if it is the last row that the 19th row which is already processed 
So there is no upcoming row, so it stops processing your data step there itself. So that is the indication that it is the end of the file marker for sets. So, so I know it, had, it must have been programmed in that way, but what happens if a blank row comes in between? So the, if the whole blank row is there, the whole blank row will be processed as it is, it will be written to our output data. So why would it not be considered as the last row? No, because in the next cycle, again, your set statement, when it hits, after the blank row, you may have another row, right? Yeah. So it's reading again, correct? So with yeah. one, it will go back into the loop of your data step. It reads your set statement. Now with the set statement, if it is the 19th or if it is the 18th row now, now you suppose this is your sarsel.cars. Now, this is sarsel.cars. Let's see with SU. So this uh, SUV had new table created, but the input table had how many rows here earlier? It was oh, 60 20. rows. No, no, yeah. SUV. Yeah, 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 SUV had 60 rows. Because here we were again subsetting it where it is taking two rows. Mm -hmm. Originally, this was having 60 rows. Now, mm -hmm. currently the 60 row is getting processed. Correct. Now with this mm -hmm. run, it is a default looping. With this run, it when run hits, it indicates it's not only the end of the step, but the current row has to be written to output data, which is processing. Now, it has another role that it moves back into data step. Again, data step is read. It read, hits set statement. It highlights this table. But this table now, 60th row was read as the last or the previous row. So it will try to search the 61th row, but it is not there. So it's the end of the file marker. So your data step halts here and it comes out of that loop and it creates your new data set. Got it? No, I understood that. I'm just curious to know because we have put suppose an Excel file uh, which was converted into SAS data or something. Excel files are like never ending files. They have like A, 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 Z something to end on the rows, on the columns. And I have no idea how many Excels are there. So how will it know? Like not for this thing where we know that, okay, it read 428 observations. So it will go for 428 observations or 60. But in an initial data set, how does it know that now the rows are blank or only that much rows had the data? Because it does so the same. Had, you remember we had discussed about a compilation yeah. phase. Yeah. So what does compilation phase does? It's actually creating a descriptor portion. So if mm -hmm. you know, if you have seen this proc contents, if you remember, what does mm -hmm. proc contents does? It gives you the descriptor yes. portion. Yeah, so it gives you the descriptor. Contents, so it also gives you the information. Suppose, for example, we use the same sasl library dot cards. What is the first initial portion of your contents? You know, proc contents give three portions of mm -hmm. your result. The first portion the is the general information general. of your table. So see how it's telling here. Mm -hmm. 420 and variables are 15. Yeah. So this is second portion engine host and the third portion is alphabetic host of its variable. So here mm -hmm. itself in descriptor portion, it overall tells that your in data has so many rows or operations. Mm -hmm. Got it now? Yeah. Correct? Mm -hmm. I hope I answered your question. Yeah. <laughs> And what does prop print does now if I write prop print data equal to sasl dot cars? What does prop print does? It gives you the data portion. Yeah, it prints the that's it. Right? Mm -hmm. so it gives you the data portion. So that's what I was telling you that when a data step has been processed, it actually creates the descriptive portion and a data portion. So this is the descriptive portion which you see by contents, which is during the compilation phase. And the data portion has been presented with prop print, which has been created during your um, execution phase. Or uh, yes, so we have compilation and execution phase of your data set, correct? So that's what it is. Correct? 
So compilation and execution phase. So what execution phase is? It reads and writes data. And that is why we see the data with proc print. Correct? And what is execution phase? It checks for syntax, identify column attributes. See, what is this column attributes? It's nothing but the same thing. That column, it describes how many columns, how many variables, what are the type of the columns, length of the column, name of the column. Correct? So that is with descriptor portion. Right? So that means compilation phase, of, uh, phase is done first and then execution, right? Absolutely. It first moves to compilation, then it moves to execution. Absolutely. All right. So let's work on this activity A01 for lesson number four. Complete your data step to create a temporary table named storm underscore new by reading from permanent data pg1.storm summary. Run the program, read the log. Define a library name out named out pointing to your output folder in the main course file folder. Change the program to save the permanent version of Storm. Okay, go ahead. Keep this program open for your next activity. Lesson 4 A01. So from your servers and files in activities, lesson 4 A01. Complete your data step to create a temporary table. So what temporary table? By default, even if you do not write work library, you know, even if you simply write it as storm underscore new, it will be default save into your temporary library called as work. It has to be read from one of the permanent library. So read, reading it is going to be from your existing table which is permanent, which is saved from your pg1 dot form underscore comment. Run the program, read the log. Understand the log. It's the same thing what I have explained. So what log is telling? So many observations read from permanent data file and a temporary data file created by copying all rows and all columns from your input table. Agreed? Yes. Define the library named as out. But do we really have this out library created for us? Yes. We haven't created one. You haven't created. So how you will create it? See, you have a folder called output in your PG1. As we have activities, data, demos, you had created folder output. Yeah. Correct? So copy that path for your output folder and create a library named as out. So how you will create a library? Lib name. Absolutely. Lib name. Out is the library. Give the path for your output folder and you refer it now. So earlier this Tom was saving into work library, which was temporary. Now you are directing it to be saved into one of your permanent, user-defined permanent libraries called out. Hence, now when you check your log or even the output table name, it's now coming in ref as out.storm. So checking your now, log it's telling it's reading from permanent data set to a permanent library it's been created so this is also becomes your permanent data file got it that what is telling you changing the program to save permanent version of new storm into your out library so it's your permanent library it's user defined because you are created by giving this path agreed yeah this should be your program shanmuga priyanka i hope you are with me yes Ashwin. Did you understand this concept? 
yes we are creating that out uh, like uh, we did that pg one right right absolutely it's one of our permanent user defined libraries okay see when you check this folder now you will find your storm summary data file see this is my earlier work but i have storm new na storm new see this is storm new dot sas 7 beta so this extension dot sas 7 beta it's to our external drive that this data set is been created and its extension with this name indicates it's a sas table so you have referred it to your folder that this table is been saved in this folder by giving this path agreed priyanka i hope you have followed it and you were able to do this same i am doing it right now Ashwini created in output. Okay, but did you understand the log and what we are doing it now? Yes, yes. The difference in the message in log earlier without out referencing your data file like this, mm. right? Yeah. So check mm. in this folder also with output. You have your storm new data set. Why did I had warning before? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Ashwini, Ashwini. Yes, yes. Tell me, Ashwini. While we we are creating that um, lib name, we have to right click the path and uh, properties and take the path, right? You have to copy that path from properties. Yes. For out, what path we have to copy? See so this output folder which you had created earlier under PG one. Oh, okay. Already, it's there. Okay. Yeah, we had created, right? Okay, okay. Then, if it's not there, you can simply create that folder. You know how one can create a folder and give the path. Yes, yes. It's already there. I can take it. Correct. so uh, the out uh, library we are doing only because uh, they asked for the permanent library right they asked so it's like an activity for you also like in case whenever you'll be working in your life scenario when you want to create it as a permanent table you can always use this type of technique okay and if we uh, if we have not used it it will be stored in the work right Absolutely. So it's temporary. That means that table will be in the uh, work library only till your session is on. Once you end your session, you know whatever you save in work, it is deleted. So next time when you start your session and you try to see that uh, earlier table which was been created in work, it's no more there. Okay. Therefore, we call it as temporary. Ashwini, my table says it is an invalid table. Share a screen, please. Yeah. Finding thing I'm doing. 
So lib name out. I think I know what I have to do. Priyanka, how do we create a library? How do we create a library? Check the code of library statement. What is the reference you give in library? Um, I know this one is not created, but this library is not giving me the um, properties for out. I tried going in the properties, but the... We do not write the library's property, Priyanka. We write the folders path. Yeah, but... Where is the folders? You go in servers, files and folders. Not in my libraries. See in PG1, click PG1. See output folder is here. Copy the path here, output folder. This is data set, output folder, correct. Right click, properties. Copy this path. This is the path. Close your quotes, yes. So check your log. Check your log. The log there is no error. Read it. What it's telling. Understand what it's telling. Self understanding will help you what it's telling. The data set outdoor has the same number of observations. Did you understand? Yeah. Okay, I can't open. Now I should be able to see it in that. Got it. Yeah. Understood. Yep. Great. Yes, Shanmuga. Yes, Ashwini, I understood. Okay, great. So with this activity, we had done this, right? This was temporary, this is permanent. So this was the answer. So keep this program open for our next activity, all right. Okay, so now there is a question, multiple answer question. The table listed in said statement must be read via a library. Which data source can be used in said statement? Yes. SAS tables. SAS tables. But the library can be prepared from other things also, right? Excel spreadsheets. Absolutely. You can have input source where you can create library for all these data files. Excel and database DBLS as well. So it's not always a SAS table as your input table. Correct? But shouldn't it be converted into a SAS table before you do it? Like So if like... you remember, we had access the table from Excel via lib name and we referred with libref and the table name also. Yes. So not necessary, always it should be. Okay. Why not comma delimited files also? Comma delimited files have been read from input, uh, talk input. So you ideally convert it into data set itself. Those are like CSV files you're talking about? Absolutely, mm -hmm. CSV files. Mm -hmm. Those will be converting into data set and then we'll be reading it. Correct, because we read CSV files from proc import. We do not read it via lib. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Remember, proc import, yeah. where we write out equal to. So out equal to means it's a new data set. Yeah. Yes. 
The statement is now, you know, with set statement, it's new data set by copying all rows and all columns. But you do not want all the rows. As per your business scenario, you may want to select only few rows as per your requirement of your scenario. Hence, you know, you can subset your this new data set from your input. So it's called subsetting also with your where expression. So data step needs rows only from the input table where the expression is true, you use where. So it's filtering rows based on the expression. So see, it's with the same sasl dot class. Class, you are selecting the data with column age greater than or equal to 50. So it's filtering five rows and the new data set is created with five observations with where age greater than or equal to 50. So selecting all the rows where age is greater than or equal to 50. Correct? Now this was with, was with respect to hold on. All right, now we had seen how one can subset your data with rows or you know how one can subset your data for rows we use where statement, correct? Now see, it's reading all five or it's reading, you're filtering your data with five rows and it's reading all five columns. So in our case also, in our current example, where we had written this data step, where it's creating SUV data, correct? It filtered the rows. So when this data was created, if you have observed, it's reading all the columns. By default, all 15 columns. Correct? But we don't want all these 15 columns as per your maybe business requirement. All right? So we do not want all these 15 columns. So how do we select the columns for your output table? You can always select the columns for your output table by either writing a key statement or a drop statement so keep is a statement where i'm asking sas to keep only this columns to my output table all right so look at it how it reads or how it gives the information so when this data step has been processed check your log first see of course, it filtered on two rows. And what is your new data set created with two rows and four variables? Yeah. What are those four variables? When you see your output table, make model type MRS, MR, MSRP. So as per your code, what has happened? It's reading this input table with all rows, but in your output table, it is selecting or it's keeping only make model type and MSRP. Either you write keep which you want in your output table or you write drop which you want to drop all those columns. But remember, do not write both, either of it, because drop the name of those columns which you write here, drop those columns. Ultimately, it means indirectly keep these columns. So if the list of dropping your columns is too huge, don't keep on typing those names. Simply write those which you want to keep it. Getting it? So this is what you are now filtering the input table on columns also with keep or drop statement. I hope now it's understood. Swarupa, with the challenge work which you had done earlier. Yeah. Okay. Others, I hope the earlier explanation and now what we are learning is correlating you and making some sense to understand how one can select the columns for your output data set. Is there yes. any rule to keep uh, the keep statement at what? Um, no. Row? No. No, because no. in the, uh, the challenge, 
when i used the keep statement in the last line like after mm. whatever um, mm. it, it didn't uh, it showed errors no, like no, no. no there might there, it is not like this now see here also where i have written it's written yeah, before and yeah so even if i now copy and paste it of course it should be mostly after set only it should not be before set so in sas yeah, doc so. documentation also uh, the first written it was written like the keep can be used only for data steps so that's why i yes yes because you know it's a statement we cannot use in proc if you want to select the columns with proc we use var correct yeah yeah so this so i i i got confused because this keep and then only thing i got like uh, that you have to put in parenthesis and out for i, I don't know i just I, i'm still little confused but this yeah. i got no, no, no. data yeah, i got sure. Yeah, parenthesis. I don't know. Okay, that keep equal to data set option. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that I'll show you. Uh, that will work. Yeah. That will work out. But understand this: that yeah. keep okay. statement is written only in data step to select the columns for your output data set. Whereas with proc print, when we want to select the columns for your print output, we use var statement. Here it's doing the same work. only the keywords are different but this works for result this works to create a new data set the keep statement is not going to be work into your var or replacement of var in proc see if i write this here does keep gives you blue color no that means keep is not valid in proc it's so, valid only in data step so when proc set, print valid is with var no in proc set we in that uh, challenge thing in proc set we used it as keep equal to data set option we were writing it like this yeah so this is also valid oh. and this is also valid okay okay but uh, in so that see, if i if i comment this keep statement and i use this keep equal to data set option so when you write anything in parenthesis in front of that data set it's for that data set to be effective hence you are writing with this you are also selecting the columns for your output table and so get the same result as you were seeing with keep statement got it now why that keep equal to data set option is i'll explain this once we move with creating multiple data sets in a single data set okay like for example understand why i'm telling this pay attention it's like your extra knowledge make a note that in your data step when we are writing this output data set one can create multiple data sets from single data step so now i am mentioning that i am creating suv cars i may say that i am i need to create a table from sasl dot cars where i want the data to be as sedan cars okay and i give the information that if type is equal to suv then output should go to suv cars Type equal to sedan output should go to sedan underscore cars data set. So here we are creating. Now, 
parallelly two output uh... yes now we are creating two data sets mm -hmm. from same table and we are giving this condition statement that when type value is suv then output is the statement where i am giving that output should be written for all the values which are true for suv type it should be directed to suv cars and if type value is sedan then the output should be directed to a data set called sedan cars okay now pay attention now this is of course coming in your upcoming slides but still how keep equal to works that we are going to see let me check what's the error उटपुटर्स But here, while giving a new data set name, which is simple car, are you getting it? Student car, hence it was an error. So it's a spell check for me. So you have to be very careful what name you are giving as an output data set, and how you are mentioning in your SUV is cars only. No, no. What I am giving? Just a second. SUV you give. SUV is cars. Yes. So what we can do is here. Let's have this also cars. Put this also cars. See that underscore cars. Do we need to give a where statement or because it is if type it can just work without it too? Two semicolons. Data. Oh yeah. In the data first step. No, no, no. Semicolon is not an issue. Our ideally, it's the end of the statement. I, if and else might be the same. No, uh, but it is statement. A, see, else becomes blue. Oh, right. It has to be. uh now what is this then do and all i'll explain you once we are into your in, uh, if then else statement just understand what is going on else to Sedan spelling is correct. So, all fine. But in case now, see now I am maybe creating two tables simultaneously. Okay. So for every table, the uh, business scenario requirement here is I were in my SUV table only this columns make car and type. Whereas in sedan, I want uh, the column which is suppose type, MSRP, and model. so why requirements are two different requirements for different columns for both the tables so in that case if i write this common keep statement yeah 
may have five columns. So in that case, this common keep statement in your data step will not be useful. So in that case, you will be making use of this keep equal to data set option. Getting it where you can select the columns for their respective data sets, which you want to be selecting as per your business requirement. Getting it now. That is why we write keep equal to data set option. Are you getting the difference? Yeah. Yes. Understood? Yes, that is why we write here because this will be applicable for all the output tables. But as per the business requirement, if this table needed different columns and this needed different columns, so this will not be that much that, uh, that much efficient or um, it's not that uh, requirement, correct? Hence, yes. to make it more efficient, we write keep equal to in front of every data set so that only this data set will keep those columns as per requirement and this data set will be created with only this requirement. Either you write keep equal to to keep those columns or you write drop equal to to drop the other columns which you do not want it. All right. So okay. this was all about your drop and keep statement. So it's like subsetting the columns. So choose the statement based on the number of columns that you want to specify. So either you write keep or drop. So if you have a huge list of keeping all those columns, instead of typing those columns, you write drop which you want. Or if you have to keep, you write this or drop, you write this. Any which way, it is only going to select those columns which are to be needed for your column. When you write drop, that means it's in indirectly it's going to keep this. And when you write keep this call, it's indirectly going to drop six and eight. So the statements have the same result in your output. Understood? Yes. Yes, any question? In the homework, shall I, step, uh, shall I share my screen once? One sec, one sec. One sec. We'll just, I'll just complete this. So let's come to this activity. So it's A03. So if you remember, in our current activity, A01, you, below it itself, you have activity A03. So come to this activity code, which is already open with lesson 4A01. At the bottom, you have activity A03. See? So change the name of the output table to storm cats. Okay? And uh, include only category 5 storm, which is greater than or equal to 156 with start date on or after 1st Jan 2000. Add a statement to input the following columns to the output table. How many category five storms occurred since Jan 1st, 2000? So you have to use the same step they are telling us. Correct? So what I do it to make it more efficient, I write it here. So it's telling, change the name of your output table now, storm underscore category five. That five, correct? Then include only category five storms. That means max wind mile per hour greater than or equal to 156. So you can subset your rows where max Wind mile per hour column is greater than or equal to 156. And how do you mention your column start date or your columns to be filtered? If you remember, it's a calendar date. You have to specify the instructions that SAS should convert your calendar date to SAS date. So, how you'll be writing that? If you remember, Give the column name, start date. You are right, and you give your calendar date as Jan 2000, 
as it is and you use this d constant so what is that d constant doing it will convert your calendar date into sas date right so this is where you're filtering on category 5 and start date add the columns now add the columns that means it's telling your output table it's telling here your output table should include only this column season basin name type so remember this column names has to be specified with separated by spaces and not comma and of course Correct. So, how many category five storms occurred since Jan first two thousand? So, let's execute data step. So what is the error? I'm getting? Oh, I did not give any. operator so they wanted anything which is started from first jan or after that so i write greater than equal to so there are five columns 18 rows so first jan onwards the question is how many category five storm occurred since jan 1 2000 have a column anything for category yes it This was the four. Yes, so this was the code, correct? I hope you have written the same code. Everyone. Yes. Did you get the same result? How many categories you are getting? A rose, you're asking? Or? Yes, yes. yes. 18. So, 18, absolutely. So, this was your program. Correct? See, it's telling there were 18 category 5 storms in Jan, first Jan, 2000. So, how is the skip statement different from bar statement in prop print? Yes, we have already discussed. Now, let's see how much you remember. Yes, how is the keep statement different from bar statement in proper? One goes for the data statements, which goes data during. Step. Yes, so keep works in your data step, var works in proper. So it's the same that you are selecting the columns, but they are used in different steps. Now you know what format does. Now we know while generating the print output or proc fake or proc means you can apply formats to display your columns in specific formats, correct? You can also write a format statement in data step as well. But when you write a format statement in data step, that format will be applied permanently on your output result that whenever you generate your output, your report will be seen or your data set will be seen in this particular format, correct? That means, now remember, our current output for this storm category is coming up with your season name, wind mile per hour, basin name type in this form, correct? But in case for this season or name, I want to apply this name with a weight of only three, okay? So whenever I'll be writing this format statement in my data step, understand, format, I write column is name, I 
give the format name that I want because it's a character type of column dollar three dot. But before working on this, I check the contents. Talk contents. Data equal to out dot from underscore that file. So this was my original or before writing prop format or executing that data step with prop format, I'm checking the contents. Now, what is my contents given that there are 18 rows, five variables, correct? This is my data set name. This is the engine host information. And see, it has attributes telling name, type and length, correct? So this is the name, this is the type of my columns and this is the current length. So current length for name is 52 length, correct? So it has only three attributes currently. But now when I execute this data step with my format statement, okay, now understand. I execute this. I see my data set has been created. So, uh, so this is my data set. So see the values for name, how they are appearing. It's appearing only with word three, correct? But when I check the result, see the set third or the fourth column, which I see in my attributes is format column. And what is the format applied is dollar three dot. So this three dot is the value which it will always result in your data. Whenever you open this table, your, your values will be appearing only with format applied, which is three width. But originally the length is still 57, but it will always display with dollar three dot as a format. That means it's a format to be displayed the values. So see, when you see open your table, your values are only displaying with three word. Getting it? So we can't change it again, right? If it is permanent, that means? No, permanent means it will come or it will display always with that format. But if you want to reapply the format in prop print, suppose like I write prop print. Data equal to out dot from category 5. I write format on my column name. I want the weight to be this. It's a character column. So when you format statement, you write with prop print, it's the temporary display of my data in result. But when I write in data step, it's like whenever you open your table, it will appear with that format. So see, it's, it's for result. It's coming with this format with $5. Getting it or with five, but originally your data is still being applied with a format to be displayed. That means whenever you open your table, your table will be seen with the format applied is three word. So you are overwriting in your result by applying this format in prop print. So in data, data it will be permanent, but if in prop print, it's it, it's like an attribute, one of the characteristics of format. You are not changing the length, original length. It's just how you want to display the value. Okay. Are you getting the difference? Now we have seen with what is format. It's like the instructions, how you want to change the appearance of your data to be seen. So if you write the instructions in data step, it will show that default whenever you open the table. But if you want to show it in your result in a separate form, you can always overwrite your permanent with what we have currently with property. Getting it? Yeah. So it's just one of the characteristics how to display the data values. Priyanka, Shanmuga, I hope you people are following. Nilima. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So this was about your format. So see, it's formats in the data step are permanently assigned to the columns. So syntax is same what we have done with props. So see, original in sashelp.class, 
original format or original columns appear this way but when we apply a format in data set see it's a data set actually and whenever you open your data set it will appear the format in this form so because you are writing three dot this values are getting round up it's trying to adjust within the weight which you have provided to be displayed correct and thus you have an exercise all right so you can try this with this activity what i have highlighted with format statements and you can work out with an exercise also This meeting is being recorded. Yes, Ashwin. Are you done? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's have an exercise with level one on page four hyphen eleven. Exercise on page four hyphen eleven on your PDF level one, creating a table. So see, it's telling PG one dot EU underscore. OCC. That means it's European Occupation Table of SAS dataset, which contains monthly occupancy rates for European countries from January two thousand four to September two thousand seventeen. Open this dataset. Examine the column and name values. So let's open this table. So it's libraries. PG one EU occupants. Check. See, it's always mandatory whenever we are working on any of this business requirements. We should always understand your input table. Very important. You being a data analyst. Okay. So they are asking you to observe. We have six columns. Say four four thousand seven hundred and eighty five rows. So these columns are geo, country, year, month, hotel, short stay. So look at the year, month value, how it's appearing. So this is way. In case if you want to check the descriptive portion, see in SAS Studio you have this flexibility where you can see at the left hand side the information. In case if you want to check for year, month, so see year, month, it's telling the name, the length, its type. In case you check this column, numeric short stay. See, it's numeric. Its name, its actual name, or its name is short stay. But in our output, it's appearing, or it is having a label, so it's appearing with this. So just in general, it's the descriptive portion which you can see here. Look at the values. Geo, it may be a geographical stay or something, geographical location. E T and all those stuffs. Fine. All right. So moving back to your scenario or your business query, it's telling open this table, or it's telling open this code. Now look at the code name P one zero four P zero one. That means P zero one means we are going to open a existing program from the folder practice. Okay. So P for practice. So which lesson four? Go into your files and folders in PG one. Go with practice folder within practice four. P four, P one zero four, P zero four. Is it or P zero one? They said it's P zero one. So open practice zero one. So it has already pre existing certain statements provided to us. We have to modify as per the business requirement. So it's telling modify the code to create a temporary table named EU occupancy for 2016 and read it from a permanent data PG1 dot Euro occupancy. So let's see temporary table. So no need of referring any word uh, library. 
by default, even if you do not apply any library to be specified, it will default save into your temporary library, which is work. So this is 2016. Which set you are reading from pg one dot all right so complete your where statement to subset your data where it's telling select only the state that were reported in the year 2016 notice that your month is a character column and the first four position represents yours so that's why if you have observed this so your month this represents the year correct so how are we going to select this? Tell me, we want only first six values to be 2016. How are we going to do this? Tell me. Yes. Any idea? Yes. I hope I'm audible. I hope I'm audible to every one of you. Yes, yes. Okay, great. So tell me. We can give the year into uh, uh, with the underscore for the number of months we need. What's the column name? Your month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How will subset this? How will select that we want to select it only 2016? It will be um like we make we will make equal to and we will do dash dash 2016. Uh -huh. And then we will um, close it and put D. So it is converted into a date format to be read, but also dash dash would not consider any dates, but 2016 will be counted. No, uh, your attempt is good, I appreciate, but this is not what we have learned. We, don't, we, we do not have like this dash dash. Hmm. So there is one thing which you can write is contents. Okay, there is this operator contents. All right. Between? No, contents. So, contents means what it contains. Okay. So, I can use this operator content and I can give it in my parenthesis or in quotes because if you have observed this original table carefully, that's why I said you, if you see the left side pane for your descriptor portion of your month, it's a character variable. Correct. So, being a character variable, you can put the value that it contains the word, though it's numeric, but it's character. So you write it this way. All right. So let's see if it's working. Yes, it's working. See, 2016. So it's selecting only those values which are 2016. See, it's subsetting your rows original. It has 4,700 and something rows. It's given 348 rows. You see? It's very correct. So, contents means from your column, the values should contain 2,600. Getting it? So, you've got to know with the new operator contents. Fine. So, this is all fine. All right. Complete your format statement in data step to apply comma seven dot format for hotel. Why hotel? Because if you see the values for hotel, it's a numeric column. These are simple numbers, digits, but they are not representing or it should be presentable where you want commas to be separated, the values. Okay. So how do you apply that or how do you represent those values? So here in format, you rewrite column name and apply a format of comma with a weight of 17 dot, correct? To the hotel stay, short uh, stay and camp. So there are all these columns, hotel, short stay and camp with a common format with 
comma seven dot because these are all your columns which are numeric which should be applied with comma. So is this? We have hotel, we have short stay, and we have tax. Okay. Then they are telling complete the statement to drop or to exclude geo from the table. So instead of keep, which may give the huge list of columns to be kept, I simply use short where the columns are maybe small short list to be dropped. So now I execute this table statement of the tester and I check. Now, geo, I do not have in my data file. So out of six columns, I have only five columns. See, I have all the values for your month only for the year 2016. And see, my hotel stay, short stay, camp is representing with format applied with comma. So see, it's the output of your data set. It's not a result only. So your data is applying a permanent format Okay, so if you want to check with the format is applied, if you remember, you can always check it with the descriptor portion with that to programmatically with prop contents or in this left hand side for your year month, of course, it's a character hotel. See a new format, a new attribute added is format which is applied, comma 17 dot. Same go for short stay, same go for caps. Format is applied. Correct? So this was your exercise. This should be your code. Ashwini? Yes. Can I ask one more thing in this? Yes. yes. We got like year month contains 2016. Can we do it, which is a difficult method of doing it, using like between 0101 2016 to 1231 2016? 12, 31, what is this? Like if you want to select just that year, selecting the first day of the year in the last day of the year and selecting in between them would still bring you the same will still bring you the results from 2016. I know it's a difficult way, but I'm no, just trying. No, no, But if you observe this column carefully, your column mm -hmm. itself is having first three year Correct. value, then yeah. the month. So how yeah. come you gave zero, zero, one? I don't know what your value Did you try it on your, on your code? Uh, no, I have not tried it. I, I will try it um, later when I'll revise, but because yeah. this is a character column, this so is you a character cannot column. use that way. Yeah. If it was a numeric column, like a date column, so then if it was a date column, then uh, uh, we would have used functions. So what are that functions? We'll see later on. Okay. 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 So functions is to extract the values.
others i hope you people are able to work on this exercise did you understand yes sir. see before working on original table what the contents with formats let me call it lies format see when you apply a format on this new which we have created so that content shows a new address in the format column Ashwini, are you talking? I couldn't hear you. No, no, I can't speak anything. I was just telling before uh, working on this. Check the contents of your input table. Then after when you created this new table, check the contents of this new column with this format. Okay, that's it. Ashwini, Ashwini, yes. Uh, this exercise is done, but I have a small question from earlier activity. You tell me. Okay, shall I share the screen now? Yes, yes, share. Are you seeing? Not yes, now it's oh, in this. Um, actually, here I forgot to give the character dollar one, but it is still mm -hmm. fine, no problem. So, it will just show me, show me our output. All right, check your log. problem so no message no warning it's up because it's a weight right it's you are simply applying a weight that the value should apply a three getting it so not giving dollar it is considering so always, always a better way of uh, using a dollar sign for your character values because in this so problem it is simple way the simple weight either it's numeric character column you are simply asking to display the value with so much of weight yeah but since it is character we should give the dollar as per the format yes yes that's what i'm telling you that's what i'm telling you that even if you do not write dollar weight it is going to give without dollar sign weight with that given instruction so either it's a character or a numeric column but it is not working with prop print without without dollar it is not considered yes 
so that's what we so it 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 is sometimes it works it sometimes it does not work with character with without dollar but that's what i'm telling it's always a best practice if it is a character for uh, use a word with person okay and uh, okay. this one like yesterday's do you have time uh, just quick yes i have time you check your time people because it's for you it will be late night so this is the homework which you have given in this is the mm -hmm. challenge part okay mm -hmm. so in this part if i give the keep statement immediately after the input data it is considering mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. here over here i have given in the third line it's not considering it won't work dear because it's a keep equal to and equal to with it we write only with your data set as a data set option parenthesis it's a prop step it cannot use as a statement here prop step never entering scape that's what we saw with print also right can you repeat so that's it give me the remote access uh yeah i have requested all right see what is trying to do is see it's this keep highlighted with blue no so it's a proc step agreed so i had seen earlier also that proc step never entertains keep keep state we had seen one of the example with proc print yes yes correct so if you want the skip to be implemented for your output data set in this output data set we have seen recently how keep equal data set option works on output data set which you are creating mm -hmm. so here you are going to write in parenthesis like this mm -hmm. and then you can write equal this is coming right now this You write it like this. Then only this will be used to work down. Getting it now? Yeah. Can you just run this once? So from input table, you are sorting now. Wait one sec. It will be a syntax because this no to be a part of a prop sort. So remove it. Hmm. Oh, okay. Done? Yeah. If you know, the output data is created and this output data set is now having only two variables. Which two variables you have used in your keep equal to data set option with your out equal, out equal to when you create a new table, you are keeping only for your new table, you add. Okay. Yes. So, any more doubts? Any more questions? Shanmuga, Priyanka, Swaruka, with exercise which we have done. No, right now, no. No. no okay. No, Shanmuga, Priyanka. No, I'm fine. There. Fine. So yeah. this is going to be a um. Uh, we are for a day but i would request you please review the topic in case if you have doubts we will always discuss it in our next class okay uh, can you please stop sharing nilima you are controlling the screen you can you can also stop participant share all right so yeah. with this will stop our day one sec and we can always uh, please revise all the demo and activities for today's topic, including the exercises, including the one which we have done and the two which are pending. All right.